Hey friends, welcome to a new reading vlog. So today I am starting a, another reading vlog. I feel like I just finished one up, but this is going to be the next installment of my 22 books to read in 2022 series. And for this one, I'm actually hoping to read four books. So obviously only two of them are going to be from my 22 and 22 list, but the other two are on my most anticipated. I will pop up the graphic here of my most anticipated books. I am making really good progress on this list and I just want to make sure that I am prioritizing these books. So there are four books that I really want to read this week. The first one from my 22 and 22 list is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. This is a contemporary romance. I have not read from this author before but I've heard really good things and I believe this one is following an ER doctor whose entire family is a bunch of like world-renowned surgeons and she's kind of like looked down upon because she's not a surgeon as well but she absolutely loves her career and she wants to prioritize her career but she meets this guy he's like a farmer or carpenter or something like that and she doesn't feel like it's possible for their relationship to work out because she doesn't know how to balance like her career with a relationship. I assume this is their romance. I know nothing else about it but I've seen really really good reviews so I'm excited to give this one a read. The other one from that list that I'm going to be reading is The Dragon's Bride by Katie Robert. I was originally going to read this one next month but this is the Ravished by Romance April book of the month so I really want to give this one a read so that I can watch the live show. Ravished by Romance is ran by Jess from A Piece of Books and Lacey and Lisa. I will link, I will leave the Ravished by Romance information down below, but this is a monster romance by Katie Robert. I really like Katie Robert, however the last couple of her books have been misses for me. I'm hoping this one redeems it. It is a romance with our heroine who is human and a dragon who purchases her from an auction. All I know about it is it's their romance. I'm excited to give this one a read. And then the other two books that I really want to read for this video that are part of my most anticipated list are I Kissed Sarah Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. This is their first YA romance. It seems like there might be a mystery in here as well. I'm gonna listen to this on audio because I got an ALC of this from Libro. I will link Libro FM down below if you have not checked them out. Everyone who signs up through Libro gets a referral link, so if you use my referral link, I think we both get like a free credit. I'm not like actually affiliated with them in any way. Everyone just gets this referral link so but I get ALCs from them every single month and this was one of them for April so I'm gonna listen to this on audiobook and then the last one that I'm hoping to read is The Long Game by Rachel Reed. This is the much anticipated follow-up to The Heated Rivalry. It's a MM hockey romance. You do probably need to read book one in order to read a book two but it's a romance so it's not like anything in here is going to spoil book one. Like you know you know they end up together at book one. It's a romance. I'm going to read and vlog this and those are the four books that I'm hoping to read. I'm really really excited for all of them. I have been on a huge indie romance like KU binge recently so I'm excited to have a couple of trade books on here. More lighthearted contemporary things because I've been reading a a lot, a lot of angsty romance lately, so it'll be nice to mix it up a little bit. But I think that's it for this little intro. It's Monday today. I have a really, really busy day. In fact, this week is going to be really busy. I do have a half day on Thursday to finally get my hair done because it is a hot mess. And then I took off Friday, so it will be a short week. But I have, I have a lot, I have a lot to get done. Um, I did not have a very productive weekend. So I need to catch up on all of that. I have to run some errands today. Hopefully I can get some reading in. Luckily one of these is an audiobook so I can listen to it throughout the week but I will check back in with you a little bit later when I choose my first book. Ever since we kissed I don't know what to do Someone 
you need to excuse my appearance. I have been sitting here for the last like hour just binge watching booktube videos and I realized I should probably do a quick check-in because I am now 50% into I Kissed Shara Wheeler. I've been saying Sarah. I assumed that it was just like a funky spelling for Sarah. No, it's Shara. <laughs> Thank goodness for the audiobook. Otherwise, I would still be pronouncing this wrong. But this is super good. First of all, this is narrated by Natalie Nottis, who is one of my favorite narrators. She's so good. This audiobook is fantastic. So highly recommend that if you are into audiobooks. This is Casey McGriston's first YA book. And I think when I was kind of pitching this, I said that I didn't know like how mystery heavy, how romance heavy, like what the vibes were for this. And it's kind of like a YA contemporary, a mystery involved in it, but almost like a game. So that's cool. And then you can tell that there is some sort of romantic undercurrent happening, but I'm not sure where it's going. So we are following our main character, Chloe. She, right at the beginning of the book, breaks into Shara's house because it is like the day after prom or two days after prom and Shara has gone missing that like morning or something like that, Shara randomly kisses her in an elevator and then just like disappears. And so she breaks into Shara's house to see if like she is actually missing or if she's just like at home and not like responding or whatever. When she gets to the house, she finds this guy in there named Rory and Rory is kind of like the bad boy so he doesn't like take school too seriously, nothing like that. He's like super angsty and he lives next door to Shara. And so he like crawled in through the window and the two of them are kind of like, wait, why are you here? And we find out that Rory was also kissed by her the day of, like the day of the prom. When they're at the house, they find this letter and the letter is kind of like a clue and it tells them to include Shara's boyfriend. And so the next day at school, they go and meet up with Shara's boyfriend and he's like the football quarterback. So he's the big jock and he's like super popular. So all three of them are working together to figure out what happened to Shara. And every single time they find a clue, it leads them to another clue. So they are trying to find all of these notes that Shara left them to try and figure out why she disappeared, why they are all working together, like why she's leaving them these clues. And you can tell that there is some sort of romance. Our main character, Chloe, is a really interesting character to follow because on the one hand, you like her as a character. She's your main character. You're like in her head, but she's also super flawed. There are things that she says and does that are not great. Nothing like mean or anything like that. It's just she jumps to a lot of conclusions and she talks very highly of herself and she she jumps to a lot of conclusions about other people and so she tends to be very judgmental and so she's just a very fascinating character to follow and like be in her head because you can tell that like all of her views and things like that are obviously skewed to how she perceives the world. So I, I'm in, I'm enjoying being in her head and we're getting to this point where she is jumping to conclusions about this mystery. I have my theories on why Shara is doing all these things. As they're finding out all these clues, they're learning all these secrets about Shara. And so they are in, they're in Alabama, the Bible Belt of Alabama. And so they go to this really, really religious school. So that is playing a really big role in here. And our heroine, Chloe, grew up in California. She had a very different upbringing. And so when they moved to Alabama, she chose this really religious school because it was the best school to go to. But she challenges all of these little things along the way. Like she's always challenging the dress code and things like that. Shara is kind of like the golden child. Like her face is on a billboard. Everyone thinks of her as being perfect. As they're figuring out all these clues, Shara is sharing all of these like dark secrets about her, about how she like blackmailed a friend and how like she did all of these bad things. They're both battling for valedictorian and Shara is beloved and Chloe is always like testing the limits and boundaries. And so they are always like, they're always butting heads. I'm really interested to see where it's going. I'm really excited to see like how this all wraps up. I have some theories about how all of our main characters are gonna like intertwine and come together. 
but I don't want to give any of it away because if I state my theories and they're correct, I'm gonna have to edit that out as a spoiler, but so I'm just not gonna say my theories. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I have finally tried to set an appointment with a dermatologist to figure out what is going on with my skin. So hopefully this is no longer a look moving forward because I am really over whatever, whatever all of this is. I need to go to a work meeting here shortly, but other than that, I think I'm just going to listen to some more of my audiobook. I'm really trying to finish up this cross stitch project. It is Alice in Wonderland. It's taking me forever. It's really detailed. So I think I'm going to sit here until my meeting and listen to, listen to some more of my audiobook. Once that meeting's over, I'll probably log off for the day and sit here. I was going to go to yoga, but I'm just not feeling it. I think that's it for this update and I will check back in with you once I finish Shara Wheeler. I am now at 75% of I Kissed Shara Wheeler. So the first 50% of this book was like a five star. I was like in it. I loved like all the little clues and I loved the characters. I listened to you know, that ne next 25%. One, the direction that like I thought it was going, it did go. So I was right about that. And I really like that part. But I'm, I feel like the pace has really slowed down. Our heroine, um, Chloe, has done some things that have just like really irritated me. I hope that they work themselves out in the last half. Essentially, she's treated her friends really, really poorly because she got like caught up in the situation. And I hope that it's addressed at some point. I like all of the themes that are in here, owning who you are and what it is like to be in this environment where all of the adults and like the people that you look to for advice are telling you that who you are is wrong. Going through all of that and like the toll that that takes on a teenager. And I like, I like all of that. I just don't know how I'm feeling about our romance with Chloe. And I don't know if it's going to go there or not. I don't, I don't know if I want it to go there or not. But I just feel like the pace has slowed down quite a bit. Like I said, that like first half with all of the clues and like all of that was really like engaging. Something about this next 25% it had just, it hasn't kept me engaged. Like I was like, oh, I have to be just about done with this book. And I still have an hour to go. And I was like, wait, <laughs> what? Like what is going to happen? And I think part of it is because at the point where I'm at, they've figured out everything that's in the synopsis. That first 50% was really the synopsis and then the this next 25% was all of it coming together. And I'm like, well, what is the last 25% gonna be about? Like, I thought I had like 15 minutes left in the book. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not sure what's gonna happen from here. This last quarter is gonna kind of be the determining factor of my rating. That is it for this little update. I'm gonna go back to listening and I will come back to you as soon as I am done. I just finished up I Kissed Shara Wheeler and I am giving this a four and a half star. It was so close to a five star but because I felt like it like took a little dip there at like the 60%, it felt weird giving it a five star, but this was so, so, so good. I went over the whole synopsis for this, but I think what Casey McQuiston does so well in all of their books is they're able to take these like really difficult topics and things that can create like a really strong emotional reaction to people and they're able to mix that and make points and get their message across while also having these really heartwarming moments and some like humor and all of these things. And so the book never ends up feeling heavy, especially since this book is ta tackling something and it's geared towards teens and it's really kind of going after that like teenage feeling of like not belonging and not being understood. So it could have gone really heavy. And I think that for queer teens who are going through this type of situation, the last thing you want is more heaviness. And so their ability to take those topics and take those messages and themes and make them feel hopeful is outstanding. Like it's the same thing that they did in Red, White, and Royal Blue. And that's what this book did so well is they were able to take the topic of religion and these really intense 
beliefs that people have and use that as their like backing for being terrible towards entire groups of people showed that you can still be yourself. There is a community and there is more beyond that. Taking that and still saying like you can still feel a connection to that place even though there is all of this terrible stuff. So a lot of the characters were kind of struggling with the fact that they this town is all they know and they feel this like deep sense of belonging and home in this town and city. At the same time, the city has never accepted who they are and trying to battle those two different things. I want <laughs> I want another book. I want like an adult sequel <laughs> to this or like a new adult sequel because at the very end of this, it's kind of, it's left wide open because I mean, they're in high school. I, I want like a new adult or an adult sequel where we get this, like even if it was like two years later, like where they're all at, I want more from these characters. These were such, such good characters. I loved where everything ended up. Like is when I did my last update and I was at that like 75% mark and I was like, what is this last hour gonna be? And it was, it was so good. I liked the impact of that last hour. It was so good. I loved, loved everything about it. It's gonna be a really important story. This is gonna end up, hands down, this is gonna end up on lists of banned books. So pick this one up preemptively because it's, it's gonna be on that list. It was fantastic. I think I'm gonna start in on my next book. Oh, my whole world is so I think my next book is going to be Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. I have kind of pitched this book already. I have not started this yet, so I don't know anything more about it. I think I'm gonna go back downstairs and start in on Part of Your World, and then most likely tomorrow I will check back in and give you another update. I wanted to give you a, a quick update because last night I got to about 45% into part of your world and I do have some thoughts and feelings. So this book opens up with our heroine whose family is kind of like famous in the medical world. They work for this one hospital up in Minnesota. She is kind of like the outcast of the family because she's only an ER, ER doctor. Her brother was kind of always primed to take over like the medical empire. But at the beginning of the book, he announces that he's not moving back. He's living in Cambodia. He leaves our heroine with the burden of family legacy. And she really doesn't want it at all. You know, she really just wants to be an ER doctor. And at the beginning of this, she is driving back home after a funeral and she ends up getting like stuck in a ditch in like the middle of nowhere. This guy ends up pulling up and he's like, here, I'll just like tow you out. So he tows her out, drives off, and she decides to stop somewhere and get food. But the only place is the bar that the guy mentioned and the guy ends up being there. Things happen and they end up talking and they end up hooking up. I will say that so far it's like 99% closed door and I'm a little salty about it. I'm not super happy that it's closed door. It still has really cute moments and I really like the dialogue and the discussions and things like that. But our heroine essentially goes back home after that. She thinks that like they're never gonna see each other again. Meanwhile at home, she's going through a really, really terrible breakup because her long-term boyfriend was emotionally abusive. Um, on top of all of that, he is the leading surgeon at the hospital that she works at. And so they are always in contact. And he has this persona of being this like amazing guy. She caught him cheating as well, but everyone's like, oh, just forgive him. They don't know that he was secretly emotionally abusive. And so she's dealing with all of that back home. She starts seeing the guy again. In like the scene, like right before I finished reading, last night, her and two of the like snotty girls that she's friends with end up going down and staying at his inn. And our heroine doesn't know that that's where they're going. But when she gets there, she realizes, oh shit, this is like where my guy is working. And she doesn't want these two girls to know because she doesn't want them to make obnoxious comments. And they, their husbands are really good friends with her ex and she just wants to keep all of it 
separate from her ex because she knows that he's gonna do something terrible. And she like quickly texts them and she's like, pretend you don't know me. All the while, while they're down there, her friends are making these terrible comments about him because they're talking about how attractive he is and stuff but then talking down about him. And they were like, your parents would never allow you to date somebody like him. And I was just like, dude, you're 37. Do whatever you want. The heroine, she kind of let them get away with it, but she also stood up for him, kept commenting about how as she's like distanced herself from this ex and like gone through therapy, she realizes how toxic this whole environment is and so she is like commenting about how terrible all of these comments are how she really doesn't want to be with these girls but it was really difficult to read the heroine is still going through some trauma with her ex and so you can tell that like hearing these types of things are still like bringing up some of those emotions so it's it was really difficult to read and she ends up oh, my ring light died again dang it Okay, let's see if that works. Hopefully that doesn't kill my ring light. There was a really funny scene where she like pulls one on the girls because they are like being really, really terrible right at the end of their stay. And she ends up getting back at them, but it was, it was really good. I love the chemistry between the two characters. And I like how high the stakes are because the heroine isn't just like doing this for looks or oh, I don't want people to know because of society. She feels a lot of pressure from her family because now that her brother is gone, she doesn't want to be essentially the one person to ruin her family's legacy. But at the same time, she doesn't want the legacy. She just wants to be a doctor and help people. And so she's kind of torn. Do I go after what I actually want or do I submit to what my family expects of me and like the pressure that she feels with her name? And so the stakes feel really high. My only complaint so far is that it's closed door. <laughs> I'm not going to like DNF it or anything like that. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at. I am still working. I am downstairs working today because I am PMSing and it is awful. I have my heating pad. I am <laughs> finishing up making some lunch and I have my ebook down here because um, I just have some, I have to hand off this project and then I'm pretty much done for the day. So I think I have like quite a bit. I think I have like a little less than three hours left. Let me take a look. Yeah, I have like two and a half hours left. So I am planning to finish this today. So I think I'm going to go grab my lunch and read for my lunch hour and then try to wrap up my work project and come back. There are sprints happening today. So maybe I can participate in some sprints. They're happening at one. So I still have a little over an hour until that happens. I am going to try and finish this book today and I will come back when I either have more thoughts or have finished the book. So I don't have much space left on my camera, but I just got to 75% of part of your world. And <laughs> you know those moments in a book where you just like get to a part and you're like, oh no, oh no, no. And you like slam the book shut and you're just like, I can't look. <laughs> That just happened where I just like got to a part on like I felt the embarrassment and like bad vibes coming off the page and I was like slammed it shut and I'm so scared to go back in <laughs> without like going super spoilery. One of the big holdups of their relationship is that um, our heroine's family is straight up cruel. Her father really sees her as just kind of like a pawn. She is to do exactly as he says. She is going to become the chief of emergency medicine. She is going to marry somebody that will propel their name. Essentially, she is just somebody to marry off to help continue their name. She does not want Daniel to ever meet her family because she knows that they're going to say terrible, terrible things to him. And he really wants to meet her family and he really wants to he's willing to like give up everything to be with her and she's like absolutely not like i am trying to save you from the terrible people in my world he is now being exposed to the terrible people in her world and i am so terrified <laughs> i'm so terrified to keep reading because i know it's gonna be brutal and it's gonna hurt and i don't want to see poor daniel's heart broken so i'm scared i'm really really scared but I'm gonna go in and do it. I think I have under an hour left. 59 minutes left on my audiobook, or on my audiobook, on my ebook. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go in and try not to cry. I just finished Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, and I am giving this like a four, four and a half star. This book gave me all the butterflies. 
like there were scenes where they were like expressing themselves or like when they had their big, you know, like the third act breakup sort of spiel. I like my heart was hurting. Like I thought I was going to start crying just because like the way that they were talking about the loss of each other hurt so much. Oh my god, I was like ready to start sobbing. I did read a review that said this isn't nearly as emotional as her previous books, which I haven't read, but I did want to note that for anyone who was considering reading this but thought that the previous her previous books were too heart-wrenching. Apparently this one is much less on the emotionally devastating side. There are huge, huge content warnings for depression, PTSD. There is also a lot of on-page verbal and physical abuse. It's handled in a way that I, I really liked. Um, this book is very pro-therapy, reaching out and helping. There, there were a lot of really good things done in here. I liked the romance a lot. This had this really soft, light, magical element throughout the whole thing. Essentially, the town is almost sentient. It just made it feel very fairy tale like All of their feelings and like all of the little whimsical things that were just kind of like sprinkled throughout just made it feel very romantic and fairy tale like and it was just, it was all done very well. It was really sweet. Like I said, the stakes felt really high. The conclusion was adorable. So I just, I really, I really liked this. It was great. I had a good time. I had tons of emotions while reading it. And after I finished that, I decided to pivot into a totally different feel. And I am going to pick up The Dragon's Bride by Katie Robert. This one is really short. It's it's 182 pages, so this should only take me a day or so to read. It's already a little bit late, so I probably won't finish it tonight. It's like seven o'clock, but I will definitely finish this tomorrow. This is definitely what I'm going to pick up next just because I need something totally different than the last book. I this is a monster romance so i'm sure this one's gonna be super super steamy as compared to the closed door scenes of the previous book that one was a lot more like heartwarming and wonderful and romantic and this one i assume is going to be the majority sexy times so this is what i'm gonna read next i don't know if i will come back and at like the 50 percent mark and check in or if i'm just gonna come back at the end oh this is dual pov oh i like that okay so yeah I will come back probably tomorrow and check in with my progress on this. Hey guys, so I'm here with new hair. I got my hair done yesterday and I really, I'm a big fan. I'm also in workout clothes cause it is, it's Friday, I have the day off today and I am going to the gym in like two and a half hours. So I just, I'm doing like some house stuff. So I was like, I'm just gonna throw on my work clothes or my workout clothes now. I just wanted to do a really quick update. I haven't, I haven't done much since the last time I updated. It's been like a day and a half, but I am, let's see, don't judge me for folding the corners. I am just about 50 pages in and so far I'm liking this quite a bit. Like I, Katie Robert is one of those authors that I read everything that she publishes but I never give anything that she writes five stars. I, I love her romances. They're super steamy. They're super fun and just like they're good times. They're always like really diverse and like they have very sex positive and she's very, she writes a lot of queer romances. She writes a lot of poly romances, all different types of romances. And I, I really like the representation that she always has in her books. This one, so Briar Rose has been in a very abusive marriage for like 13 years and a demon shows up after she tries to escape her husband. He's like, I will take care of your husband if you give us seven years in the demon world. She agrees to make this deal with this demon and when she goes there she finds herself on an auction block with four other women and there are all of these monsters essentially there and they each have they're each essentially the leader of a realm so there's five different realms in here these women are essentially going to be their brides and there is a reason behind it i don't quite understand it yet all of the kingdoms are cut off and they are like perpetually on the verge of war and somehow having human brides is gonna like fix this. I don't know how yet, but I'm really, I'm really liking it. It's kind of like a captor captive romance because she has given herself willingly to this deal. She doesn't necessarily want to 
be with this dragon. He can't hurt her. He can't like force her into anything. It all has to be consensual. Otherwise the deal is automatically broken and she can go back to the real world. The dragon really wants to have children with a human. And I, I don't, again, I don't understand why quite yet. I don't know if that comes later, but he really wants to actually marry this girl. And so he's trying, he's giving her space right now. But obviously like he's gonna seduce her but she's in this semi reluctantly she did this out of need not like want it's it's good so far I'm, I'm enjoying it I they didn't just like pop into bed right away it wasn't like insta lovey she's like I don't know this dude and I don't trust him at all but they had to go through a marriage ceremony in order to like protect her from the other dragons that's where we're at she's like hiding in her room and he's giving her space and at this point she's like getting sick of being in the room and I'm assuming she's gonna start wandering and they're gonna like develop feelings and then I'm assuming it's just like sexy times for the last third but we shall see like I said it this is only like 180 pages so I'm already almost a third of the way through I will check in with you later I am definitely planning to just like knock the rest of this out today since it's only like 100 pages or whatever that I have I will check back in with you later this afternoon. So I wanted to update you on The Dragon Bride by Katie Robert. I actually did this wrap up last night and I was looking back on my clips and I realized I forgot to plug in my microphone. So you couldn't even hear me. <laughs> I was just like talking to the camera. But I ended up giving this a three and a half stars. This was really fun. I really enjoyed this monster romance from Katie Robert. I actually really liked that this had more romantic buildup than the Bloodline Vampire series, which is actually like in the same world as this book. This has a lot more romantic buildup and less just like steamy scene after steamy scene after steamy scene. Like this still had a really good sexy times in it, but it also had like a lot more of their like relationship development and like getting to know each other and things like that which I appreciated especially since it's only like it was like 180 pages or whatever so it was still really short but it had like a good balance between the sexy times and the romantic build up. One hang up and this has actually been my hang up with the past couple of Katie Roberts books that I've read is her world building is not the greatest and in this case it ended up being a detriment to the book because they kept bringing up about how it was so important that these four women were brought to this realm and like how it would help their realm because their realm is constantly on the verge of war. I did not understand the explanations. They were all really vague explanations. And by the end of the book, I was like, I still don't understand why these five women were brought here. Like they kept talking about how the women were going to help bring peace and I was like but how I don't get why and like the explanation for how they like increase magic and things like that it just it wasn't enough to <laughs> make me make me understand and because it was brought up I kept questioning it the whole time I was like but wait I don't understand why they're here whereas if it had just been ignored I would have I would have never really thought about it very much but since it was brought up a couple of times and there was an attempt at explaining it it ended up like bringing it down for me because I just did not understand. I gave it three and a half stars. It was really fun. I liked it. I liked the writing. I liked the characters. I am excited for the other characters in here, especially the Bargainer Demon, who from what I understand is the final book. He's the one I'm most excited for. I will definitely be picking up the next book. I did enjoy this a lot. So I am now on to The Long Game by Rachel Reed. I did start this today. Game. I don't remember how far I was. So let me just quickly take a peek. You can see my my puppy looking out the window. My husband just left to go to a hockey game and so she keeps like looking out the window for him. It's really cute. I'm 10% in, so I'm on chapter four, so I'm not very far. But so far it is already hurting my heart a little bit. I just, I love these characters so much and you can tell that they like absolutely adore each other. They don't know how to bring their relationship public and Shane gets a lot of anxiety around the thought of people knowing about his relationship because he doesn't want it to over overpower, sh outshine his career. And he just has a lot of anxiety over how people are going to react and like the mean, like whether or not he can handle the things that they say. 
and Isla is so much more go with the flow and just kind of accepting that things are what they are. And so you can tell that Isla is more open to just going public and saying screw it, but he also knows that it's gonna make Shane uncomfortable, but he doesn't understand why it's making Shane uncomfortable. So you can tell it's like starting to build some tension. I'm scared, I'm scared for these two characters because I just want them to be happy. Like I know there's a happily ever after it's a romance, but I'm still scared for the journey. <laughs> so I am home alone the rest of the night. It is like, yeah, 5.15. So I have the whole night ahead of me to read. I'm kind of planning to read for like the next four hours. So I'm going to finish up the audiobook that I'm currently listening to because I just have one hour left in it. And then I'm going to come back to this because this says I have like five hours. This is a longer book. And then I'm going to get back to reading this and I will check back in with you a little bit later tonight. So it has been a minute since I have updated, but I am now 82% into the long game and I never updated you, partly because I read the majority of this last night. I got to like the 24% mark a couple of days ago, and then I had to put this down, and then last night I read like the majority of this, and I am so obsessed with this book. It is hurting my heart. <laughs> the dogs have all, or all the animals have decided to join me, so hopefully they can keep it down. So in this, we are following Isla and Shane. They are still keeping their secret. So they have now been together like nearly 10 years, but they have been in a committed relationship for like, I think like three is like how long they've been together now. Isla has now moved from Boston to Ottawa and he wants to become a Canadian citizen for Shane. So Shane lives in Montreal and he is a Canadian citizen. Montreal is like a really, really good team in this world and Ottawa is awful. <laughs> so Isla has pretty much given up his entire career at this point to be with Shane because he is playing on a team that has, they've never won any sort of cup or anything like that. Throughout this book, we are following them as they are kind of struggling with keeping their secret. They're both madly in love and they want to make their relationship work, but because they are playing on rival teams, they never get to see each other during the real, the regular season, but they only get like a day here and there. It's just really starting to take its toll on them. So Isla is really struggling with depression in this book. So huge trigger warnings for depression, suicide. He lost his mother to depression when he was just a child. And you watch him like go to therapy and start like working through a lot of his trauma. And one of the things that is brought up is how he feels like he's given up so much for Shane and he would still give up all of that stuff but he has nothing left for himself so like Shane has his parents nearby and he has a couple of friends that know about the two of them and he has a hockey team that's winning and Isla is kind of like a stranger in this town he doesn't have any friends nearby that speak Russian he doesn't have anyone he can confide in he doesn't have family and so he's pretty much given up his whole life for this relationship and he admits like, I would do it again. Like I still want to do this, but it's just hard. And so you're kind of watching him open up a little bit and to them having to work through a lot of things. Shane coming to realize that Isla has given up, has like sacrificed far more than he has. Them trying to decide like how much they're willing to give up. Like to what point is hockey more important than their relationship? Right before I closed the book last night, I got to the climax of the story. I don't want to spoil it but it is going to be painful. <laughs> like I am, I actually closed it because it was right before bed and I was like, I'm not gonna be able to sleep. <laughs> I'm going to sit here and finish it. It's four o'clock, so I'm done with work for the day. So I think my Kindle says I have less than an hour left. I have 58 minutes left in the book. So I'm just gonna sit here and finish this up. I'm home by myself tonight because my husband has a village board meeting. So I'm just gonna sit here and read for the night and I will check back in with you as soon as I finish this book. I am here to wrap up this vlog. I just finished The Long Game by Rachel Reed and no surprise, I'm giving this five stars. This is for sure gonna make my favorites of the year list. I just... I love these characters so much. I honestly would read a hundred more books with these characters. I just love them. And I know we're probably not gonna get another book with them, but I want another book with them. This just, the way this ended was so cute. It was like 
simultaneously heartbreaking but so wonderful. The way I love how she ended this book because not everyone came to their side in the end. And I feel like that's a very realistic representation of this situation. As much as we would like to believe that when push comes to shove, the people we thought had our backs will always have our backs, but that isn't, that isn't the case. I feel like this was the perfect representation of that, where it's like they had their ride or dies, but at the end of the day, there were still going to be people who weren't going to support them. It was hard to read at certain points, but like the ending was just so perfect and Oh, I love them so much, so, so much. They both wear their hearts on their sleeves and I just, I love them, I love them. I, but yeah, and now I'm an empty shell of a person and I don't know what to read because I just wanna read more about Shane and Isla. So that is going to be it for this video. This was a really successful video. So I read four books. I read Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, which I gave four and a half stars. I read I Kissed Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. This was also four and a half stars. I read The Dragon's Bride by Katie Robert, which I gave three and a half stars. And then The Long Game by Rachel Reed, which I gave five stars. So all in all, this was another really successful video. I'm so glad my vlogs have been successful lately, especially with how bad a couple of mine were last year. So I'm really glad this one went really well and I will catch you all in my next video. Bye!